okay in last session we stopped with the question uh, why this k is singular or why it cannot be solved uh, yet uh, for the system kd equals to f so the reason is that we have not yet enforced the dirichlet condition okay so recall that uh, the bar that we have is fixed at the left end and then there is a force of let's say 10 newtons at the right end when we were using the ritz approach directly we had used a function n not of x which was explicitly enforcing this essential boundary condition or the uh, dirichlet condition at the left end but in the fem uh, whatever we have developed so far uh, we have used piecewise functions n1 n2 and n1 n2 uh, for the two elements but we have not used the fact or we have not yet enforced the fact that at the left end uh, this system is fixed okay and because in the development of this fem approach the dirichlet condition is not considered explicitly it needs to be enforced outside of it or which means after forming this matrix it has to be enforced and without enforcing it the system cannot be solved and hence it is called the essential boundary condition okay uh, now you can link that uh, since this is singular k uh, since this is singular uh, uh, being a linear system of equations uh, you know this system can have either infinitely many solutions or no solutions okay and in this case uh, you may visualize a bar with just an applied load of 10 newtons with no fixity uh, so this system will of course have uh, infinitely many equilibrium positions or in fact uh, you can debate whether this is infinitely many equilibrium solutions or whether this is no equilibrium solutions okay. and of course if you think deeply you will realize that this will begin to accelerate uh, where the acceleration can be you know m equals to f so f is 10 newtons if you know the mass you can calculate the acceleration and of course uh, this is a system in non equilibrium uh, so basically this will have no solutions uh, this is going to accelerate since we are interested in static equilibrium problems we will enforce the boundary condition okay and as a consequence of the kronecker delta property we know that if u at x equal to 0 has to be enforced it is sufficient to enforce d1 equal to 0 okay so we have this system uh, where this d1 we know that it, this is equal to 0 okay and this is what we want to tell we want to tell this uh, linear system of equations that d1 equal to 0 is known okay so one um, easy way of enforcing it is uh, we retain d1 here okay then whatever is this right side term on the same row uh, this we set equal to 0 whatever are the off diagonal terms of the row in which d1 exists uh, this we set equal to 0 which means this we will say 0 this we will say 0 although it is already 0 but both of them we will 0 0 out and the diagonal term of the term where there is essential condition we will set equal to 1 okay so the matrix uh, the second two rows do not change in the first row we have set this equal to 1 this equal to 0 this equal to 0 this remains and the right hand side this if this was non zero we would have set this equal to zero okay now if you see that the first row of this matrix system will give d1 equal to zero okay so by saying that these off diagonals are zero is ensuring that whatever is the value of d2 and d3 or other terms later on if we are using a larger system they do not have any effect on calculation of d1 okay uh, and by in saying this is 0 and this is 1 we are sort of forming a system of 1 times d1 equal to 0 okay now if let us say u at 
zero was let's say one point two. Then this right hand side instead of saying equal to zero, we would have set it equal to one point two. So instead of zero here, we would have set one point two, and then this system will give d one equal to one point two. Okay. So this first row uh, has now ensured that d one can be enforced or u at zero can be enforced, and now this system becomes regular. Okay, and now it can be solved. So you can either solve this three by three form directly, or you can also solve the uh, reduced uh, two by two form, uh, whatever is here. Okay, and after solving, you get d one, d two, d three as zero, five, and ten. And you can again recall that d three, which is the tip deflection, is ten, uh, which is again exact. And, and since we chose another node in the middle. D two is five, so basically this is uh, giving sort of uh, the exact results equivalent to ten x, uh, which is the solution in this case. Okay, and u of x if it is required anywhere else other than the nodes, it can be calculated by just doing n times d. Okay, where n is the shape function. So if let's say uh, u at zero point two five has to be calculated. So we know that this lies in element number one, right? So we will calculate this as n one times d one plus n two times d two, where this n one and n two are shape functions for the first element. Uh, similarly, if u at let's say point six was to be calculated, uh, this will again this will now be n one times d two plus n two times d three, uh, where n one and n two are shape functions for the second element. Okay. Now there is a more general way of applying the essential boundary conditions. What we did earlier was a little ad hoc. And now let us look at this more general view. Okay. So basically, uh, whatever matrix system we have can be partitioned into two blocks. Okay. So what we have is. This horizontal line is dividing in a way that above the horizontal line we have the restrained degrees of freedom. So restrained degrees of freedom are the are those where an essential condition is specified, or their value is fixed or a priori known, and it should not be calculated again. It is already known. Okay, and below are the unrestrained. Degrees of freedom. Unrestrained means these are the ones which we want to calculate. These are the ones uh, which are not known. And wherever we draw this line horizontally, we draw the same line vertically also. Okay. And I think before we proceed, you may also. Uh, you know think about just make a note and then may, maybe you can think about later that the earlier way of applying boundary condition uh, destroys symmetry which is obvious and it can actually cause ill conditioning uh, this is something which you can think about okay now let us get back to this new way of applying boundary conditions so after partitioning uh, you know this kind of partitioning partitioning we have a block system of equations okay Where in this matrix, okay, first let us talk about, talk about the vector. So in this vector, which is the degree of freedom ve vector or the, or the displacement vector, the top vector is the restrained degrees of freedom, and these are known. And this we are denoting as d r, okay. And the bottom set of numbers are the unrestrained degrees of freedom, and these are unknown. These are what we want to calculate. Okay? Similarly, if you think about the right-hand side vector, uh, which in our problem is the force vector, the bottom, which is the unrestrained degrees of freedom, uh, these are the forces which are applied. Okay, so this can be zero also, but these are the forces which are applied. So, uh, if you think about this, uh, the problem that we are solving, uh, this particular node is where 
D is known. Okay, and this particular node is where force was applied, and hence it is known. Okay, so this is an unrestrained degree of freedom where uh, there is an applied force, and the force is known. So F U is known, and D R is known. Now, similarly, this uh, uh, the forces at the restrained degrees of freedom. These are in a way support reactions. So this is like force at this point, uh, at the support. So these are support reactions, and these are not known. Okay, and uh, you know corresponding uh, notations on the matrix we are writing like this. So this is K R R, K R U, K U R, and K U. So this is now a block system of equations. Okay, and if you take this first block, that first block gives us this. So K R R times D R plus K R U times D U is equal to F R, and this is a system where the F R or the right hand side is unknown. Okay, and this is a system where D R is known. now the second row the second block we write as kur times dr plus kuu times du equals to fu and now this fu is known okay and uh, dr is known now there is only one unknown which is du okay which can be calculated so so this we can reform in this manner where du can be calculated uh, notice that in this equation there are two unknowns du and F fr there is only one known which is dr in the second block there are two knowns and only one unknown du which can be calculated from here okay so once we calculate du uh, it can be plugged back here plugged back here and you can calculate fr if needed okay so this is a more elegant way of applying boundary conditions with the essential boundary condition and of course uh, it may be required to uh, do some elementary row operations to ensure that you can do this uh, block division in a contiguous sense